Carl, no carrot tops? I beg your pardon? I specifically asked for carrots with the tops attached. Steve, Steve, what's with the attitude? Calm down, man. Calm down, chill, relax. You're getting all hot and bothered about a few carrot tops. Don't most people just chop them off and bin them anyway? I'm not like most people. I use my carrot tops for a numerous amount of things. Whether it be in smoothies, I use them in salads, stocks and sauces. And it's all about using what's up here. Can I ask you something? What? <laughs> Does your head ever hurt? From what? From being such a culinary genius, of course. <sighs> Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well Steve, since we're talking about vegetables, they're top of mind, uh, why don't you give us a little tip on working with vegetables for the Sunday dinner, for example? Absolutely, Carl. All our vegetables usually have got a natural sugar within them. But if I've got carrots or maybe some turnip or tomatoes, um, with the carrots, what I would do, I'd just saute them with a little bit of butter and a touch of sugar as well. This will really bring the extra sweetness out of them mm. on their natural sugars. Now, could you use honey as well? Absolutely, Carl. But what I would do with the honey, I would drizzle that over at the last minute. But if I sauteed it, you'd be very close to burning it. Okay. Well, that's a great tip. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Coming up on the program today, our special guest is Chrissy Holmes. She's the co-host of the CBC Radio Morning Show, fondly remembered by all of us here at One Chef, One Critic, because 10 years ago, when we started this project, believe it or not, mm -hmm. uh, Chrissy was our producer, and she was with us for three years. Uh, so uh, we're very happy to have her back on our 10th anniversary series. And what are we going to be making with Chrissy? We're going to be making a wonderful vegetarian dish. It's going to be curry cauliflower and uh, sweet potatoes in phyllo pastry. And our guest chef today is Brenda O'Reilly of Yellow Valley Brewery and Restaurant and O'Reilly's Irish Pub on George Street. And she's going to be making a knock your socks off tequila shrimp appetizer. Stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Well, here she is. She's returned to the scene of the crime, Chrissy Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Back, guys. Happy so to be back. Happy to you. Welcome, indeed. Oh yes. My wow. Goodness. Can't believe wow. ten yeah. years. It just seems like yesterday. Yeah. I know. We were starting this project, and you were over there, and we yep. were here. <laughs> it's a lot more terrifying on this side of the camera, I have to say. Yeah. Mm, now you now you understand what we went through. I do. I do, and I completely appreciate it. And I apologize. <laughs> okay. For being such a rough producer. Okay. Right? We accept your apology. No but problem. It is, no sincerely, problem. it is great to have you with us. And we're going to be making something uh, specifically for you today. Tell us about it. Absolutely. What we're going to be doing, Chrissy, I'm going to be making it. Oh, we're going to be making a wonderful cauliflower and sweet potato curry and oh, a vegetarian yeah. dish with tomatoes and chickpeas and things like that and some lime and some cilantro. And we're going to be putting them into some phyllo pockets, baking them in the oven. And Carl's going to put some basmati rice on there. Oh, oh yeah. that's okay. So yeah. let's genius. Get some, it <laughs> sounds genius, yes. is what it sounds so we'll like. Put some, a little okay. bit of olive oil in there. Get that there, and then we'll put the uh, the vegetables in, and I'm going to get you to stir it once I've got the vegetables in there. Oh, this we'll is the fun part. It is indeed, it is indeed. So all of that, we're not going to be shy with them all. Get it all in there. Oh, this looks good already. I'm really excited about it. I never would have thought to put all that stuff inside so, a pocket. In pocket. Right? That's what's going to happen. So I'll give that, that to you the okay. spoon there. I'm going to chop a little onion up as stir well. It up. Okay. So do you get to cook much at home, Chrissy? Yes, I do. I do a fair bit of cooking, actually. Um, and, and you are a vegetarian, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've, over the years, I've flip-flopped back and yeah. forth from... Is that a challenge, being a vegetarian? Because you had to make sure you're getting your protein and yeah. all that stuff, right? That's the challenge, really, yeah. is like how to not get bored with tofu mm. <laughs> um, and beans. Yes. So yes. you're giving me a whole other like uh, trick here now. like. Mm. I like this. So you put the onions in after. Absolutely. Well, it's all going to caramelize anyway. So. Oh, smart. Mm. Yeah. Like that. So yeah, it's a bit of a challenge trying yeah. to keep it exciting, you know. 
I'm definitely uh, don't eat as much protein as I should. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Well, you have to make sure you get your protein, you know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so let's uh, let's delve into your past. Okay. <laughs> do -do 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 -do. <laughs> you grew up in St. John's, right? Grew up in St. John's. Yeah. Yep. Total towny girl. Yeah. And uh, did you were you did you kind of have like a, a arts communication bent when you when you were in school or? Ah. Uh, Probably, I guess it would be fair to say that. My dad's an artist, mm -hmm. so we kind of grew up with that around all the time. And I was always interested. You know what I always wanted to do? Was write a, or somehow make TV shows. Like, that was, right. I was obsessed with, t you know, kid in the 80s, right? Oh, of Best course. Best yeah. era of yeah. TV shows, I think, at least kids programming. Yeah. So I was obsessed with TV, <laughs> really. Like, mom had to try to pry me and my sister away from the TV yeah. most of the time. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I just always knew I wanted to do something with that. You know, writing little comic strips all the time. Now, didn't you at one point uh, study screenwriting? Yes, yeah. So I studied, uh, yeah, screenwriting and broadcasting at Algonquin in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess that was kind of like in the trying to figure out exactly what you want yeah, to do yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. So I kind of checked all that stuff off the list as I went. I was like, okay. When I finally started in broadcast, I realized, okay, getting closer, <laughs> yeah. getting closer, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, that smells so good. No, I've just put the fresh ginger in there. It's really bringing the aromatic oh, it smells flavors. delicious. So, but, yeah. um, obviously, there's more uh, seasoning besides the fresh ginger. Yeah, right? well, what we're going to be putting in now, I've got some curry powder, it's got some cumin in there, a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of chili powder in there, and uh, we'll add that yeah. to that. So, so far, what we have is all fresh vegetables Jules. in olive oil, some aromatics, and mm. we're going to add uh, the curry powder. It smells Absolutely. good already. Actually, we can put it in there now. I'm not going to be shy. It's going to change the color of it, too, isn't it? Is, it is indeed. And then we'll it's going to look like a true curry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yum. Wow. I get the fun part here. Thanks. Yeah. You're letting me do it all? Absolutely. Thanks, I'm still Scott. waiting for my pop to boil. <laughs> <laughs> um, great planning there, Steve. Yeah, I know, I know. I should have had well, a water boiling in the beginning. Well, you're still razzing each other. I can yeah. see yeah. that. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Oh, if, I couldn't, if I couldn't razz him, I wouldn't do the show. <laughs> yeah. And he does. He has a change on that does. side of it. I know he does. Yeah. I love it. It makes for a good show, though, right? Uh, yeah, it does indeed. A little tension there. Yeah, that's right. He does indeed. Right? Like so that. then uh, your first job in uh, television was in technical, right? Yeah, I was hired as a technical employee. I remember, yeah. Because we both worked uh, together at the CBC. Yep. You did? Yep. Way back then. Yes. I didn't realize that. Did well, you? yes. You didn't know this. No, My you taught him everything he knows. And I'm actually, no. in a small, small way, I'm responsible for her first on-air gig. Yes, you are entirely, you know, so he, actually. He told me how I was the first chef as well, so my goodness. He, he must <laughs> yeah, be I very old. On, I put, be very, very old. I put no. him on television the first time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you. my first on-air gig ever was backfilling for you for a summer. That's and right. I remember the senior producer of Here Now at the time, Doug Leto. That's right. Yeah. And I was a technical employee then. I was working in VTR. I was actually an AD, yeah, right? Yeah, a technical yeah. assistant director, Time Watch mm. person, right? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, at that time, uh, Doug Leto comes and he says, how would you like to try out for uh, the weather, like fill in weather person when Carl goes on vacation? I was like, what, me, really? <laughs> and anyway, so it, it happened and then you showed me how to do it. I did, I, I mean, did. I tried, <laughs> yep. right? I can't say you showed me how to do it, but that's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> the weather is hard to do. It is hard to do. It's yeah. like, it's actually, I think, yeah. the, one of the hardest gigs you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, and why is that? <sighs> why is that? Well, uh, well, there's a lot of preparation, and yes, one of the does. hardest parts yes. that I always found was back in the day when I did the weather. <laughs> unlike unlike the guy who's doing it now, they gave me like two or three minutes. He gets like eight or yes. whatever. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, sorry, Ryan. I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean <laughs> to be critical. But anyway, uh, and I'm not criticizing Ryan. I'm no, just no, saying no. back then I was given sometimes two, two and a half minutes. To go so through the whole province. For the whole province. So I had to take reams and reams of weather material and, and telescope it down into two minutes, which is, I mean, it's impossible. It's really impossible. So that was one of the hardest things. Yes. And then, of course. And there's um, no script. So this is the other thing. That's people right. Don't it was all no up script. in my head. It's all, it's all in your all head. To the, it's yeah, all it in was your all, head. all in the head. So, yeah, not as easy. No, anyway. it, it's very uh, challenging. Yeah. 
Uh, so anyway, kudos to you, and because uh, honestly, and uh, one of my favorite days ever uh, inside the Here and Now newsroom was when overheard in the newsroom. Did you ever see? Anyway, it's a bit of a thing. You can like Google up that hashtag and find all kinds of um, inappropriate things overheard yes. in a newsroom. That's right. But one of my favorite overheard in a newsroom was the day that David Cochran. I can't remember the circumstance. Oh, Ryan Ryan Snodden's wife went into labor. Oh, right. And I had okay. the lead story that yeah. night. So they didn't have a weather person to cover. Yeah. So David Cochran had to go and do the weather. Right. And when it was all <laughs> over and done with, David Cochran comes out and says, the weather is the hardest job in the building. And I just went, yeah. yes, <laughs> finally, somebody gets it. Like, yeah. it really, yeah, yeah. it really is. So yeah. to you and Ryan and everybody that does it, and I've talked with Carolyn Stokes about this quite a bit yeah. as well. It, it really is. So top respect yeah. to people that yeah. uh, that do that job full time. Yeah. So what right. we would do with that now, Chrissy, we'll let that yes. cook down. We will, we'll, we will cover it or leave it like that for about another 10 to 15 minutes. And then I would let it cool down. Okay. And uh, then I have some phyllo pastry, just layer it with butter in between and pop the, uh, the uh, curry cauliflower in the center. And then through the wonder of magic, we open the okay. oven if you'd like okay. to send to the side. Uh, I want to see what this looks like. And away we go. Ooh. And it just comes out like so. Ooh. Okay. Ah, and we ooh, bake that, ah. and that's going to go right on top of the um, right on top of the uh, rice, rice, the basmati rice. Amazing. Yep. Indeed. Amazing. Wow. Oh, smell that now. Ew. Oh, oh, you can smell the yeah. curry coming through, and the cilantro, and everything else. It's beautiful. You can indeed. You can yeah. certainly yeah. smell the curry. How many layers that's of phyllo? Beautiful. There, there's two two layers of phyllo. Ooh. Two layers, and then just put the pocket. A lot oh. of butter in there. Oh. Lactose-free butter I've used this time as yeah. well. So that's okay. a handsome and dish. And there we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check out. I have to go find a nice wine. I'll take care of your pot. Oh, yes, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I got that. I got that. <laughs> you give him one job, you right? Give him one job, and he never listens anyway. <laughs> I mean, that has never changed in the past 10 years, you know, that kind of a thing. But. Hi, Greg. Hey, Carl. How you doing? Great. We have a vegetable dish today. Mm -hmm. Kind of a nice luncheon dish. Um, it's curried cauliflower with sweet potato wrapped up in a phyllo pastry and served on some basmati rice. So, mm. what would Dialogue Wines recommend? <sighs> sounds delicious, but sounds delicate. I don't think we want to overpower <laughs> delicate, this dish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think you probably want to go with something that's, that's very light and tannin. Um, so I, I've got a, a couple of options for you here, or three mm -hmm. options rather. Um, the first wine is from, from northern Italy, and it's a well-known grape varietal, Pinot Grigio, from uh, Villa Monte Castello. Now, what I really like about this particular Pinot, Pinot Grigio is that it's a little more uh, rounder on the palate, has a little more richness than your typical Pinot Grigio, because it is in fact 100% Pinot Grigio. A lot of Pinot Grigios you see around are, are blended with other grape varietals to sort uh, of uh, make right. it a little, a little lighter, a little more acidic. Um, this to me has a nice character for Pinot Grigio. That's why we should read the label. Yes, correct. <laughs> um, secondly, it's a well-known brand. Hardy's is very, very famous in Australia. Yeah. But this is a Riesling Gewurztraminer blend. The Riesling has some nice citrus notes. Uh, the Gewurztraminer has a little more spiciness to it. So if you think about your dish, the cauliflower, the sweet potato, um, they can kind of intertwine those flavors. Um, last. We've got a red wine, if you want to go with a red wine. Again, trying to stay away from that full-bodied wine. We're going to go with a New Zealand uh, Pinot Noir from Waypara Hills. Mm -hmm. uh, this has lots of uh, herbaceousness to it, as well as some red cherries, um, maybe even a little bit of raspberry. But again, soft tannin profile, some nice spiciness from the oak profile, which I think could go with that, uh, that little tiny hint of curry that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, well, I agree with you. It, it is kind of a light dish, and I think that this wine is probably going to be the one I'm going to pick, uh, the Hardy's, because of that uh, Gewurztraminer component. Yeah. I think that's going to help with the curry. Um, but first, I need to know how much these cost. Yeah, so the, the Pinot Grigio is uh, $19. The Hardy's is a real bargain bottle, I would say, so great choice. It's uh, $14, and then the Pinot Noir from New Zealand, the Waypara Hills, is about $25. Okay. Um, yeah, the Hardy's it is. Great choice. Thanks Good. very much. All right, enjoy. Okay, bye. And this is our third cauliflower curried 
pocket there with our phyllo pastry right on top of our basmati rice and uh, let's go and reminisce a little bit more in the dining room with both Chrissy and Carl. Okay. Mm. I, I figured a white wine would go Absolutely. well with this. Yep. So there we are now. Wow. Well, thank you. Um, let's take a little bite and, mm. and see. It looks see amazing. What, uh, thank you. With you did well. Ooh, never would have thought in a million years to put that in a pocket. Mmm. 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 You okay there, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> It sealed in all the juices. It did, didn't it? It all encapsulated in it, didn't it? It's really yeah. good. Yep. Yeah. It's really good. It's so and good. I'm absolutely telling the truth. Yeah. It, I, I love it. <laughs> Chrissy, you did a great job. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I will you actually, did a great job. Thank I will thank actually you. finish all of this after we chat with Chrissy a little bit. Okay. 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 Um, so, Chrissy, um, you, did, you created, this, this, is, this intrigues me, you created a, a show uh, for national CBC radio yep. called The Confessional. Yep. So just, what was that all about? Well, it was basically a storytelling show, right? And this was the whole thing where the idea was actually, Amy Joy and myself actually were talking about this, and so she's a producer on the morning show as well. We were talking about, you know, how can we get these stories out of people that are, you know, really have no other context except for in, you know, like kind of the way you would talking late night confessional style right like you know you're sitting around yeah. with your friends you're like well you'll never believe yeah. this <laughs> and uh we thought you know the confessional and we got it on the go and it was pretty good we uh not me saying it was good but it, it was um it turned out that we got really interesting stories from people mm. that they would ha yeah. otherwise this, this, never have this, a reason to tell okay so this is this is what i what i really want to know okay do you have one really incredible story from, from that? that series that you could, oh my gosh. You could tell? So many. Uh, well, there was one lady who I'll never forget. We One of the fun things about the show was how we would slate the stories, right? Like if you have a big board, you're like two words that describe the stories. And one of my favorite uh, slugs was Mormon underpants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this yeah. woman, uh, she came on and she grew up in a Mormon community and, uh, and she had said like, you know, Mormons, and I didn't realize this, uh, wear a complete undergarment under their outfit. And she said that she had always wanted to wear Lysenza or Victoria's Secret underwear or something. So the confession was the day that she went and tried on those undergarments and decided to leave the Mormon underpants and go with the okay. silkier things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was very heady. There was a lot of things yeah. going on with this yeah. was her internal conflict and, you yeah. know, the raciness of the store yeah. and the <laughs> juxtaposition with this. And we were like, hey, on every word, we're like, wow, <laughs> it was just turned into great, an incredible story. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, Mormon underpants stuck out. <laughs> Who knew? The Mormon underpants stuck out. Who yes. knew? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have one quick... Uh, um, reminiscence about this show. Oh, from so your many. I don't know if there's uh, not all of time. the amazing there's so many, so many all stories. Of the, uh, all of the awesome guests. Yeah, we had 10 yeah. years. Mm. My gosh, you've had all the greatest people mm. in this province, I think. Yeah. Oh, not all. They're still coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's still more to come. But well, then, uh, at least for this year. <laughs> well, G you know, Jer and the wine experts, and the, we yeah. had we had some good special and uh, some shows. good dishes. Absolutely, great Just dishes. Anyway, the yes. best Thanks so dishes. much great. for being on the show. It's been lovely well, having you again. Cheers to you guys. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations so on thank your you ten very much. years. And we'll be back with Brenda O'Reilly and uh, Tequila Shrimp Tacos. Well, Yellow Belly Brewery and Public House and Restaurant, it never ends, does it? And O'Reilly's Irish Pub on George Street, and there's probably some more we could throw in there. All of these establishments are known for the best in entertainment. They entertain your palates as well as all of your other senses. And the creative force behind all of this is the founder and she's with us today, Brenda O'Reilly. 
And it's so great to have you on the show again. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what we're going to make because I know we are going to make something because <laughs> you did put this in front of me. That's right, Carl. You're going to um, actually grill some shrimp. So what we're doing today is some tequila. Okay, this this is this is the chef trying to get back at the critic, isn't it? <laughs> huh? this is, I, I see what's About happening time, here. About time, I would say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's see how he does with shrimp now. Let's see how well, he goes. Well, this is shrimp. such a foolproof recipe. <clears throat> Okay, right. that doesn't look bad. We'll take that one little shrimp out, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what, what we got, we're doing tequila shrimp tacos. Tacos mm -hmm. are the rage right now. They are mm -hmm. so popular. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. Everyone's wanting them. They're Every, looking for everybody them. Everybody wants and them. And Craig's allergic to fish, so I came up with one for Craig. He's allergic to swimming fish, not shellfish. So, okay. so this is for Craig. <laughs> this That's is for tacos for Craig. Because so usually it's shellfish people. I'm going to start to grill yeah, some of the tacos. You're going to grill some of the tacos, some of the shells, and you're going to put some shrimp in the pan there that's smoking okay. hot. But you want your pan hot for the shrimp because yeah. you want it to cook quick. And this, they're in an oil marinade here, right? So they're in a marinade that has uh, tequila, oil, cilantro, honey, uh, agave syrup if you can find it oh. in the supermarket. Um, and of course, some salt and pepper and some okay. lime juice. And so yeah. it's like um, the, the ingredients of a margarita on the shrimp. Right. Right? Yeah. On the shrimp. So beautiful. And they cook really quickly. And of course, Steve is char grilling the uh, tortillas. See how they bubble up? Oh, absolutely. They're way better when you actually have some char on them because you're feeling okay. more flavor, flavor, right? Absolutely. So what we got too, what we're going to add to the to the tacos, we have a coleslaw, which we're not, not I'm familiar with in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is a, a cabbage coleslaw. And this is a little version of a salsa that I just put on to keep it nice and fresh. Fresh tomatoes. You know, in Newfoundland, we're not, we just want the, the ripest one you can find in the supermarket. So right. it has to be a particular kind. Yep. As long as it's red. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? We can't be fussy. Same thing with the onion. I've got green onions in here, okay. but once again, whatever onion you personally like in, in salsa. I put in some corn and some jalapeno. How do we turn that off? And uh, right there. Okay, because that's going to keep cooking. You're going to keep cooking. Yeah. That's right. It's really hot. One thing about cast iron pan, yeah. it holds its heat. That's it's right. It's beautiful to cook in. I love cooking in It really gives that caramelized flavor. So yeah, so it. we have an avocado cream here, and, and uh, I was telling Steve off camera, I came in and I had some water on that to keep the avocado from going brown. And it, it doesn't, the water doesn't penetrate through the avocado, such a high fat uh, vegetable. And so you just pour the water off and way to go. And you don't have really, the brown. That's a really right? good tip. It's a good tip, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And so what we've got here then, so people like to garnish their tacos uh, with heat sometimes yeah. or with pickled things. So sure. I have some pickled jalapenos, yeah. some, some pickled banana peppers, and yeah. some pickled radishes. Okay. And cool. that radish doesn't taste the same when it's pickled as yummy. It's like ginger. I was it's thinking beautiful. that, yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever had pickled radish. Really, really is a, it's yeah. a common ingredient on top it's of... Gonna, uh, you're going to taste it in a couple yeah, minutes. So let's yeah, I've had pickled turnip and all that stuff. But yeah. Pickled so radish. here we go with that. Yes, there we shell. go. Thank you. I'm going to put the avocado cream on the bottom. You can layer these any way you like, but I'm just going to give that a base. Put the shrimp in there. How many for each? Uh, three or four. I really like the mason jars for the presentation there as well. They're mason really, jars are really yeah. a home yep. too, right? So, and speaking of mason jars, what you have there in front of you, Steve, is a salad that I made. Okay. It's a watermelon salad. It's really nice with the shrimp uh, taco. And it's uh, watermelon feta, mint. Oh, you got some mint in there. I can yeah, smell that. A little, that bit, of lime, right, right little bit of lime juice. And, of course, um, um, some salt and pepper. You know, just Perfect. Normal. Carol, I'm going to give yeah. you some... Uh, Banana peppers and Lovely. some nice bit of heat there. Yeah. yeah. Always tell chefs to make something on the show that people can make at home, and this is something that you could very easily make at home, isn't e it? Easy to do, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put yours in a lettuce wrap. Looks if, good to if, me. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't want to have the carb, uh, just a couple of those there, Carl. Thank you. And yeah. once again, like you can assemble them anyway, whatever you like in there. Okay. So I'm gonna leave the one. pickle. I'm gonna leave the cabbage out of that one. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a different kind of heat. There we go. Perfect. So there you go. I'm going to hold, hold this underneath the camera here so people can Absolutely. See. <laughs> see the two dimensions. Isn't that beautiful? It beautiful. Yeah. Indeed it yeah. is. Such a pretty food, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty and colorful. Very colorful. And very tasty. Yeah. And, and of course you can this have this radish uh, on top. That is just really different. Totally right? changes it, doesn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't know Boy, you're does it it's, But it's sweet too. Yeah. Mm. Something sugary in there or is it just no it's just uh, a little bit of, well there's a little bit of sugar with the acid yeah. but mostly uh vinegar mostly yeah. red wine vinegar actually i like the avocado cream there and a little bit of heat there from the, the peppers oh my goodness mm. Mm. Nice, and i like them as a wrap too because you're not having to carb right you're yeah nice and crisp later yep yeah so well, it's excellent best tackle i've ever had excellent. really <laughs> good thanks so much for being on Brenda. thank you for having me always great to have you on the show and that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. 
Because oh, I got yeah. no ingredients to put in there anymore. Yeah. Oh, I see. I understand. Yes, yes. So yes, now yes, we're yes. just going to go right to the cooking. Are these recording we this time? Put that on. Yep. Yes. So you can I start grilling right away. So we... Because if he's not, I'll have to kill him. <laughs> this way, I'll have to. I'll do a lettuce wrap this time. <laughs> Brenda will kill him. <laughs> My dad might. <laughs>